What up, I'm Chef Pelka, and this is the Braves Tomo Vlog. I don't think that there's a more interesting pitcher in the Braves' whole team right now than Luis Gohara. I said it in the last video that he really warrants a whole video just for himself, so I'm going to break down what I think we can expect from Luis Gohara. So I'll treat this like I treat any other what you can expect from video, which if you're curious about those, there's also one for Ronald Acuna, Kyle Wright, Austin Riley, and a very outdated one about Kevin Maiton. So I'll go through where he came from, uh, what we can expect, you know, in terms of development curve, what he can develop into, comparisons, um, and what to look for in the immediate and sort of long-term future. In terms of who he is, he's a big, bulky, 21-year-old Brazilian kid. Obviously, Brazil's not a big baseball hotbed, uh, but Seattle went down there and signed him back in 2012. They signed him for $800,000, which is a lot, but it's not absorbently high. Uh, players signed for that every single year out of the Dominican Republic, out of Venezuela. So it was kind of a deal for Seattle, but it's not like he got shorted in any sense. He was one of Seattle's top prospects. He was their top pitcher by far. Of course, Seattle's always been a bat-heavy organization, uh, but they moved uh, Gohara for Malik Smith. We gave up Malik Smith and Shea Simmons, who the jury's still out on. We got Gohara, and we got Thomas Burroughs back, who's no slouch at all. He's a really good reliever. They're both in our top 30 prospects right now. We got him as a 20-year-old. Uh, I don't think that we really had any idea what he was, you know, coming into. In 2016, it really was a breakout campaign for him where he got his walks down uh, and he was starting to control his pitches a lot better. Uh, but we had no idea that something was about to just click. Uh, and once it did, he just buzzsawed through the minors last year, started in high A, ended the year with 29 uh, major league innings. He's so talented. He's got a three-pitch mix with a 70-grade fastball that he can sits in the upper 90s, can hit triple digits with it, uh, and he does pretty often. Uh, he's got a 60-grade slider uh, that uh, really throws hitters off, and what it means is that you can't at all sit on the fastball. He doesn't rely on the fastball to get hitters out. Uh, to top it all off, he's got a very serviceable, uh, you know, about major league quality change up. Uh, you have, it's really hard to deal with any of those pitches. Um, and it gives him really already a major league repertoire. Those three pitches are a major league arsenal as things stand. He could pitch with those right now and he would be effectively able to get hitters out. Of course, that's not all it takes to be a major league pitcher. If it were, Mike fulton Evich would be getting paid a lot more money by now. And going into the offseason, he was the guy that I think we were all, the Braves fans, the most excited about. Uh, really thinking that we had a young piece that we could just throw in our rotation, hopefully. And he would be able to sustain his own and be a guy that we could rely on. What happened to throw that off? A couple of things happened. He got to camp and he essentially got robbed of spring training. He had a couple injuries, uh, some back-to-back -back with a sprained ankle and something else. Uh, but there was another issue that happened, uh, is that he showed up and his body wasn't looking too good. And the Braves weren't very happy with him about it. Here's the thing, I typically start the videos off, like the what to expect from videos, I typically start off talking about the body, get that out of the way, and then we don't have to touch on it again. With Gohara, you can't really ignore it because it's a pretty unique case. Here's why. On fan graphs, his uh, height and weight is listed at 6'3", 210 pounds. On MLB.com and on MLB Pipeline, he is listed at 6'3", 265 pounds. So I don't know who to trust there. But based on the way everyone's acting, it sounds like MLB Pipeline is a little more accurate here. So essentially, it means that we've got a guy with weight problems. The thing about baseball players with weight problems, and a lot of athletes with weight problems, it tends to follow them throughout their career. Uh, it tends to not really go away. Uh, we've seen it with guys like CeCe Sabathia. We've had it with Matt Kemp, Pablo Sandoval. Do you remember a few years ago, CeCe really trimmed down. Uh, and they, he came to spring training, trimmed down, and they asked him what happened. And he said, I stopped eating a box of Captain Crunch every day. And the media said, you were eating a box of Captain Crunch every day? You know, it, we've seen it with Pablo Sandoval. The Giants, they show up to camp, it, it, you know, it, this weight. Matt Kemp, we told the same thing. Uh, he shows up to camp, he gains the weight back. Sometimes you put on weight in the offseason. Sometimes you put it on during the season. If you like to eat, you like to eat. You can put on and take off weight, you know at any given time. Issue is, you can put on weight a lot faster than you can take it off. But let's say he gets back on the mound, he gets his ankle healthy, things start going well, and it's, you know, this whole 50-pound offseason. Maybe it was a red hearing. I don't know. Uh, what can we expect then? I don't know if I see a staff ace in him. It has nothing to do with ability. It's kind of about the way he pitches and his personality. Do I see a guy that can go out there that I can look forward to and say, like, I can trust Gohara to stop a win streak? 
I don't know, that remains to be seen, and if he does, that's great, that's fine. Uh, of course, it is worth noting that there is Kyle Wright, there's Soroka, there's Allard, there's a lot of guys on the way uh, that hopefully can take over the ace title anyway. And this is where I've gotten some negative responses on some stuff that I've said in the past about Gohara, is that I don't see a guy that I get too excited about the idea of him being a starter. Now, likewise, I can think of a lot of comparisons to guys that are relievers. For one, the, the fastball slider changeup, that's Craig Kimbrough. That's a Craig Kimbrough pitch mix. It reminds me a lot of him. I said that in the other video. The other one, the simple left-handed power delivery with the downhill, downhill fastball, that's Zach Britton. Uh, he's still, he, the simple deliveries, it reminds me of Wade Davis, uh, the left-handed, you know, height, reminds me of Andrew Miller. Uh, there's just a lot of uh, aspects of shutdown relievers that he looks a lot like. Now, comps aren't entirely relevant, and they have nothing to do with a guy's actual career. You know, he never asked me to compare him to anyone. These are entirely fiction, and it will be up to Gohara to determine what his role will be. One reason is because it's absolutely not uncommon to turn a capable and talented starter into a shutdown reliever. Uh, for one, uh, Jonathan Papabon developed as a starter, Natalie Feliz, uh, Robert Azuna, uh, I think Trevor Rosenthal was, uh, and a lot of other guys that are just the most dominant relievers in baseball right now, they were all starters. Zach Britton, uh, Andrew Miller, Wade Davis, these guys were all starters, but they found just a better niche just being a shutdown reliever. And from a Braves perspective, a decade and a half ago, we turned a Hall of Famer into a closer. It's with guys that have this overpowering pitch mix that can go out and dominate at any given time, and it makes you question, do I want him affecting the game every fifth day, or do I want him available to affect every single game that I might be looking for a win in? Uh, it has to make you question the efficacy of it, uh, because... I need him to help me get wins, however that's going to come. Uh, and you see with a lot of guys with just overpowering fastballs that you want to find them ways to help you get wins any ways that you can. You remember we wanted Araldis Chapman to be a starter, but the Reds said no, he's more effective to us as a closer. And then they did it again once they signed Rossiel Iglesias. The third reason to me is because we're in a, a rapidly evolving MLB landscape where we don't ask starters to face the lineup the third time anyway. I don't need to be training my starters to be facing the, the lineup for the third time because the, the relievers or the, the manager isn't going to let them do it anyway. So do I want Gohara affecting the game in the first four innings or do I want him affecting more important innings later in the game? If lineups are so dominant their third time through, don't I want my most effective pitcher facing them during that time? I think I would personally rather have a shutdown seventh and eighth inning, especially in an important game, than having my best pitcher out of the game by the fourth or fifth inning. And on top of all of that, good relief pitching is quickly becoming the most expensive commodity in baseball right now. Five years ago, we would have never imagined paying a reliever $12 million, but that's exactly what the Indians are going to pay Andrew Miller this year. The Rockies are going to pay Wade Davis $17 million this year. Uh, they're going to pay Brian Shaw like $8 million. They gave him a $27 million contract for three years. Uh, the, the Yankees are going to pay $35 million in between uh, Chapman, Batonsis, and, uh, and Robertson this year. It's not optional anymore if you want to be a good team to have a shutdown bullpen. Now, right now, it appears that the Braves' bullpen is doing pretty good, uh, but it, uh, obviously we're going to need more at any given time. You can spend a lot of money on that, or you could have one of the best commodities in baseball if you can turn your good young arms into a shutdown bullpen. If Gohara can be the backbone of your bullpen, you could save tens of millions of dollars. Of course, you can make him a starter, and it's not a bad thing. That's the thing about this. I want to express there's no wrong answer here about how you want to use Gohara. If Gohara is healthy and pitching well, we've got something great no matter what. Uh, but the value of those first couple times through the lineup is a decrease in commodity, while those later innings are becoming more and more valuable Take someone that would fit back there and put them in those innings and you've got something far more valuable. Now, I, I apologize that this seems to have turned more into my opinion on Gohara than an actual scouting report of what he is. You don't need that much of a scouting report on what he is. He's a big lefty with a three-pitch mix that's dominant and it's major league ready. That's the scouting report. Now the question is, what role do you want to use him in? I like the idea of using the role of him out of the bullpen. 
But at the end of the day, there is no wrong answer. In terms of this weight issue, uh, hopefully it will turn into a non-issue, but I don't think that it will derail him from pitching in the future anyway, and when he is pitching, I think he's going to be effective. Now, in terms of which he's more likely to do, it could be a 50-50 thing. The good news is he's not married to one or the other. He's been trained as a starter, but he can likely adjust to being a reliever and then go back to a starter. We've seen it with John Smoltz. We've seen it with Neptali Feliz. Lately, we've seen it with Mike Miner. You don't have to be married to a single role. If we need him in the rotation, we're welcome to put him in the rotation. He can be good out of the rotation, hopefully. If he's more needed in the bullpen, especially, which will likely be more relevant later in the season when we're good, you put him in the bullpen, and your bullpen gets in, you know, absorbently better when he is there. Gohara, again, at the end of the day, he's a guy that a lot of people have a lot of differing, strong opinions about. I'm sure that by insinuating that I prefer him as a reliever to as a starter in a lot of situations, I might have ruffled some feathers on that. I've done it before. Uh, so that's why I'm asking you guys, tell me why I'm wrong. Hop in the comments section, feel free to roast me, or tell me if you agree with it or not. What role do you like the idea out of him in? Uh, what do you see long term for Gohara? But thank you guys for watching. If this is your first time checking out one of my videos, I'm Chef Apelka and this is the Braves Tama Blog. It's a clearly small YouTube channel uh, full of Braves fans and baseball fans. I talk about the Braves. I often talk about just things in baseball going on in general. Uh, if it seems like it's something for you, feel free to check out the channel, check out some of the videos, uh, see if it's something that is for you. Uh, you know, I really hope you enjoyed and go Braves!